Hello and welcome to Doc Clay's Chemistry Lessons. Today we're going to be looking at organic chemistry. We're going to be looking at the elimination reaction from ethanol to make alkenes. By the end of this session you should be able to outline the mechanisms for elimination of water from alcohols. We'll also look at how we can get different products depending on whether we have a symmetrical or unsymmetrical alcohol. Finally, we're going to look at the you should be able to outline the practical details of distillation, separation and purification uh, to undergo elimination reactions. So the elimination reaction we have seen before in our work on haloalkanes and in those reactions we used um, sodium hydroxide but today we're going to be using concentrated either H2SO4 for this reaction or Phosphoric acid will do the same job. And this is acting as a catalyst. And we're going to warm or heat our reaction. So let's have a look at an example. Let's imagine we're going to be using ethanol. I'll just fill in our hydrogens here. And the important thing about the catalyst is the acid is providing a source of hydrogen ions. So the first step in this reaction is a lone pair of electrons on the oxygen goes onto the hydrogen ion and we protonate the OH group. What we then have is uh, two carbons in the chain here and we've got the OH which has been protonated. So we've now got H2O on the end and that is drawing electron density away from the carbon next to the oxygen and we don't need that arrow that's just showing the movement of electron density. And as a result, that covalent bond actually breaks from the bond and onto the oxygen atom. And what that means is we end up with a situation where we have a carbon with a positive charge on it. So we have a carbocation forming. This carbocation is relatively unstable. And the carbocation will form on the most stable carbocation as preference. This is an example here of a primary carbocation. So if I look at the carbon with the cation that's on it, there is only one alkyl group attached. If we had two alkyl groups attached, so this molecule above with a CH3, that would be a this was CH3, that would be a secondary carbocation, and that would be more stable than the primary carbocation. So in order to regain some stability, the one of the hydrogen ions on the adjacent carbon, that's over here, will pass its electrons between the two carbon bonds, forming a carbon-carbon double bond. Doesn't matter which one I choose, but this one will go in between here like that. And then we end up with our alkene again. And you'll notice in that final step, we've regenerated a hydrogen ion. And we've also generated some water overall. Water actually coming out in the second step. What that means is we're going to end up with a mixture of products which are going to include water and the alkene and therefore we're going to need to separate and purify our products which we can do in a three-step process of distillation followed by separation followed by purification. Unsymmetrical alcohols, such as our example here, where we have butane 2O, 
can result in the formation of two different organic products. That's because as we form the carbocation intermediate, which I'm just going to draw here, because the carbon adjacent are different, so if I look to the left, I have a CH3, which if I look to the right, I have a CH2, CH3, then our hydrogen can donate from, be donated from either side, and we end up with the possibility of the two products. For no particular reason, I'm going to take the hydrogen from the top here, and put that one in here, and if that occurs, we're going to end up with Vute 1E, but instead, if the hydrogen is donated from the right, again from the bond to the other bond, then we'd end up with a second product of butyl. Both of these are going to end up as a mixture in our product. So we would require some way of separating these two substances. Overall, what this gives us is an opportunity to make an alkene from an alcohol and if we're wanting to make something like ethene then this actually gives us a route to make ethene from a renewable resource because we saw before ethene can come from an alcohol and we can also make um, the ethanol from a fermentation process where we can get the sugar from a renewable resource so our elimination reaction gives us a method of getting to ethene from a renewable resource rather than from crude oil. An example of how we would practically make an alkene from an alcohol is the formation of cyclohexene from cyclohexanol. The important steps in doing this is we would first of all distill the product. So in doing this step we would firstly Add our reagents to the round bottom flask. And then we would add to this mixture some anti-bumping granules. And the reason that we add anti-bumping granules is just to stop the solution from overboiling. And we have a few of these, five to ten at tops. Finally, we then warm and heat the solution or heat the reagents under distillation. And the diagram here explains distillation because we have a Liebig condenser which is set up in the horizontal so that as we boil off our reagents they travel up the tube, they reach the cold jacket and then they get cooled down, condense and then get tapped off into, uh, into a conical flask. Once we've produced our mixture we've said before that we end up with a, a mixture so we would have the acid the product and also a water layer so the fight next step is to separate using a separating funnel and in the separating funnel because we've got layers which are immiscible we'll end up with the cyclohexene on a layer above the water aqueous layer as we leave that to stand, we're then able to tap off or drain the aqueous layer, which sits below, leaving behind the impure cyclohexene. The final step of the process then is to purify this and we take our cyclohexene layer and to that we're going to add a drying agent 
to remove any excess water. A drying agent is going to be something such as calcium chloride. Once we've added the calcium chloride, we can simply filter these one last time, leaving us with a purified cyclohexene.